Hey, welcome, or welcome back, to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. But what I do know is that this is the first episode of the second of four new series on my channel. Yes, I know, I'm an overachiever. I just get hit with this inspiration and just have to share it. But, once again, we are talking about the Zodiac. We're talking about Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. But in specific today, we are talking about Capricorn, and we are talking about the planets of the Zodiac. Not just how the planet that rules the sign allocates certain traits, but also we're looking at how the colour of the planet reflects against the colours that are associated with Capricorn and if you've missed that film it'll be linked in the description box below and now as I have said pretty much from the start of my channel and I'm hearing echoes of in other channels on YouTube I'm sure it's the sincerest form of flattery Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I would have told you in the intro that this is the first film in the second new series that I have starting on my channel of the four that will be linked. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands right now. Maybe I have Italian in my bloodstream somewhere. Didn't date one for a while. Anyway, today's film is the first one about the planets of the zodiac. Now, every star sign has a ruling planet. Now, depending on what time of day you were born, you have a different... That's, that's known as your sun sign, which is your main sign. But then depending on what time of day you were born, whether it's northern or southern hemisphere, it affects what your rising sign is, what your moon sign is. It, you know, there's, there's a whole shebang. Now, I'm not even going to pretend to be knowledgeable about all that crap, because I'm not. But what I am going to do with this series, I'm going to take the colour of the physical planet, which is the ruling planet of the, with the, the sun sign, the ruling planet of the star sign, and I'm going to create a makeup look with it. And I just think It'll be interesting to see, because obviously the, f the previous film was the colours of the Zodiac. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how the colours that are associated with the star sign correlate or are different to the colour of the planet which governs that star sign. This this sort of thing fascinates me. Um, having worked in a print and design company for three years, anything to do with colours 
and the things that are linked fascinate me. That's why I started my photo inspiration series which has seen some, should say plagiarism from other channels who have uh, done a watered down version of my pick series. Imitation really is the sincerest form of flattery, uh, but the biggest sign that you have no inspiration of your own. And yes, I got my sassy bridges on again today. Mm. Now, this is still a teaching channel, so the middle bulk of the film will be me talking you through how to achieve the eye look that I'm going to do. At the end of it I will mention the traits that this planet gives the star sign and I'll also mention again like I did yesterday the colours that are associated with that star sign just to see whether they balance out or if they're complete opposites. So. Because of my chronic pain, meaning I can't blend as quickly as most people, and because I want complete beginners to be able to keep up with me, I blend at a slower speed, and my tutorials are done in real time. They don't cut anything out. Except for when I'm putting foundation and stuff on, but the actual creation of the eye look, you see all of it. Now, if this is going too slowly for you, there's a speed widget out there somewhere. Please feel free to use it. Now, another thing which nobody else was talking about until I started doing it is the difference between deep set eyes, which I have, and hooded lids. A lot of people confuse the two. Um, people with deep set eyes think they have hooded lids, follow the work around for a hooded lid, and then can't work out why their eye look is not coming out the way they want. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a, in just a second or two, maybe a few more seconds, depends how much of leather. I'm wasting more time. Shut up. I'm going to insert a clip now so that um, it'll talk you through how to work out whether you have deep set eyes or hooded lids and gives you the very simple workarounds for both types of I. Bit of a warning, with that clip I'm going to be very up close and personal. Please, don't scream. <laughs> right, here's the clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this, it is not affiliated, I don't earn money from it, but if you use my code you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over mm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, 
I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, and I am back. I hope you found that helpful. Right, I forgot to tell you which palette I'm using. Now, the planet that governs Capricorn is Saturn and Saturn is a pale gold. If I think on, I'll stick it right in the middle here. Boom. That's Saturn. Or if I forget, it's not. <laughs> so the planet I just planet? Oh lord, it's a bad pine die folks. The palette that I'm going to use to represent the planet is the Urban Decay Naked Honey because it's got some lovely light golds and a few deeper ones as well for more emphasis. So I am going to start putting some of these onto my eyelids. For once I didn't say eyeballs. Right I'm going to go in with one of the um, eye crease brushes, brush number eight from the set that I recommend from AliExpress. It's a medium width blend brush. And I'm actually going to start off by going into Flyby, which is the creamy white. Holding the brush right at the end like I always do so I don't put too much pressure on. Starting at the outside and little circular movements. Now, because my eye primer is white, you may find this difficult to see. But I 
just want it on there at the top just to help blend the golds out nicely. Now you can see I did circular movements this way going towards the nose but then coming away from the nose I reverse the direction and the reason I do that is because I'm 45, I'll be 46 in May and I've lost 14 stone which is just under 200 pounds or just over 200 pounds I can never remember and it's probably just over now because I've lost a bit more now um, so the skin on my eyelids moves and by doing this circular movement you're moving the skin around very gently so that you don't get the barcoding or the tither striping effect now with this eye, this is the eye that I'm blinding um, this got pulled around an awful lot when I was a kid and I'm talking four, five, six years old so 40 odd years ago and it has left me with these super deep creases that you can see here but you can see I've not got this side so I do have to uh, treat this eye a little bit differently okay just clean the brush off on a microfiber cloth that I've got here um, I used to use color switches but they were far too harsh on your brushes especially your natural hair brushes so now I just use either a microfiber cloth that's dry or I use a washcloth or an old tea towel just something to gently rub this against the fibres of. Right, I'm going to go into Swarm, which is this lovely pale gold. I've forgotten how much Urban Decay Shadows kick up. Can you see the amount of kick up in that pan? But it doesn't worry me because at least it means I'm getting pigment on the brush. And I can just go in and pick up that excess pigment on the top when I need to add more pigment to the brush. It's really not an issue. So it's the same thing, but lower down. Oh look, you can actually see the colour this time. That's useful, isn't it? Right. So I'm going to blend that across. A little bit of a bounce in the middle. And blend it back. If, you, if you're into watching ballroom dancing or even if you do ballroom dancing try and think of this as the the Viennese waltz of the blending world you start off with your natural turn you have a bit of a fleckle in the middle and then you reverse turn back again And you can see where I put that white down first, I'm not adding any more pigment to this brush, but I'm just blending it into that white at the edge. And it's just really diffusing the colour beautifully at the edge there, without losing any pigment. It's just diffusing where it's mixing with the white. This would be a really beautiful, um, I mean you could, you could do this look that I'm doing for work, which I can't say very often with my looks, let's be honest. Uh, most of mine are more dramatic, more editorial even. Um, it's a lovely spring look this one. Uh, you know, just pale gold and cream. And it's, I mean, I've, I'm actually, my undertones are neutral to cool. So it will work regardless of your undertone because some shades you have to be careful with. Um, if you've got a warm undertone or you've got yellow or gold and undertones to your skin, some shades of yellow and gold you have to be really careful of because they can make you look jaundiced. Uh, fortunately <clears throat> I have tested this on a friend 
he is long tied and you can use the entirety of this palette without it giving you that jaundiced effect um, and uh, this palette is actually one which when I first saw it advertised I, I poo pooed it, I anti hauled it and then I bought it there's going to be a whole series of those I tell you but at the moment I'm concentrating on my new series because a friend of mine read my cards for me and some of the things that came up in the cards were playing on my mind at stupid o'clock in the morning when I was awake with pain insomnia again and all of a sudden the, th the idea of this series or these linked series that I'm doing <coughs> just sort of hit my brain and I was like hmm, oh, do you know what I'd be interested to watch that if someone else was doing it so hopefully you'll all be interested in watching me do it <clears throat> sorry I'm a little bit croaky today don't panic I haven't got the da 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 na 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 no, not Corona. Um, it's just hay fever. So I've got a bit of a scratchy throat today. And my eyes are a bit gummy and sticky, which is why the last couple of films that I've done, I've started to record before seven in the morning. It's now closer to one in the afternoon. But I had to wait until my throat wasn't too scratchy so I had to have quite a lot of drink this morning and also I had to wait for my eyes to not feel quite so gummed up so maybe just my eye drops and stuff All right, as you can see that's a really lovely soft look I'm just going to clear it all of the pigment off of the brush and then just really lightly do a final buff along that edge to really blend the reason I put the white down first is because I didn't want um, the white to be on top of the yellow I wanted the yellow or the gold to be on top of the white so the white just lightened it rather than <clears throat> being on top of the colour. That's really pretty. It's not often I do a look this pretty. Well, actually all my looks are pretty. They're just normally a lot bolder. Right, I'm going to go in with... Uh, this is a Morphe 139. It's kind of like a big pencil brush, but it's a blendable one. And because I want to just deepen up this outer corner a little bit, and I mean a little bit, I'm going to dip into, now is Hive going to be deep enough? No. What about Drip? Yeah. Right, I'm going to dip into Drip. And I'm going to use this just in this outer corner here, going about halfway along. Tiny, tiny, tiny little circles. Just to deepen up the outer corner here and give it a little bit more definition. Can you see the difference that makes with the two? <clears throat> I'm just going to carry some of it down onto the eye there as well. Like so. A bit of a blend through.
because again I don't want it to be too dark um, because it's the planet is gold, pale gold so I still want to keep the overall gold look oh, girls next door are having fun goodness only knows how they're going to be after the uh, all the schools and stuff <clears throat> are shutting uh, only key worker um, key workers children so like nurses front row staff etc delivery drivers delivering food to stores and things and um, vulnerable children that need the hot lunchtime meal um, they're still going to be allowed to attend school but everybody else nope um, we don't know yet whether the exams are going to go ahead or if the kids are just going to have an exam based on their coursework um, personally I think they should still do an exam they can quite easily make sure the tables are far enough apart I really like this. This is coming together really pretty. Yeah, and um, as of last night, because I'm filming this on Saturday, as of last night, our wonderful Prime Minister, who started off saying, oh, let's all get together and catch it together like we used to, get it out of the way, hard immunity. You know, the complete opposite that the doctors were saying. He's now decided he's closing all the pubs to the point that uh, a couple of friends of mine were actually out in town last night and they said that there were police cars outside the pub waiting for the pub to actually close to make sure they did. Um, although it's said they had to close from the Saturday. Apparently they had to sort of any food orders that had already been placed could be cooked and stuff, but they weren't allowed to take any more orders. Um, people in the bar had to sup up, drink up and go basically. Um, and this was about seven in the evening. Normally most of our bars in Maidstone are open until at least midnight um, and some stay open until sort of 2, 3 in the morning on a Friday and Saturday so it's really going to eke into the smaller pubs profits I don't know how I mean the smaller pubs have been struggling to stay afloat as it is how they're going to cope I mean apparently it's just a month at the moment that everything's being shut but I don't know anyway happier things this look is stunning I really like this I was thinking to myself oh I'll do the look but after I finish filming I'll probably deepen it up with something else but I don't think I will I actually quite like this which I'm surprising myself at. Seriously, what's wrong with me? Good lord. Right, I'm going to grab a Morphe Jeffrey uh, lip brush because regular viewers know I love the fact it comes down to this point because it's great for getting right in there. And I'm going to use my Revolution Super Fruit spray to once I have put the pigment on the brush or wet the pigment right so I'm going to go into honey and this is a very very crumbly um, shade in the palette and as well as being crumbly it also hard pans but when it hard pans you can still pick up 
uh, pigment, which is good. Right. Spray the pigment. Dry the ferrule off. The easiest way to do that is stick it in the knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening the bristles of your brush. And I'm going to come into the corner here. Cover the lid. Well, the two thirds of the lid that didn't have any pigment on it yet. Now, obviously, I could build this up to be much more pigmented. But I actually like this level of pigmentation. Alright, dry the brush off. And I'm just going to go back into honey. Honey, 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 thrill. Oh, honey, honey. It's the Welsh in me. I can't help it. Quite funny actually, my uh, my brother-in-law has started singing as he cooks. I swear he's called that off of me. Right, now with this side, because I've got these super deep creases here, you probably can't see the tiger striping there, but what I have to do is I have to gently stretch this lid out, because otherwise what happens is all of the pigment fills up loosely rather than being neat, neatly blended like this it fills up loosely and packs into those creases and then as it dries through the day it ends up cascading down getting into my eyes you know falling all down on my cheeks and stuff uh, do not do that if you don't have to because as you could tell this side I didn't do that that's the way you should be doing it. If you, like me, have already got super deep creasing like that, um, only pull the lid out as far as you need to, don't pull it out to your ear roll. Um, and as soon as you have covered the area that has the creasing, let go. Don't stretch it out any longer than you have to. Okay. I'm going to pause you while I go and burn some foundation and whatnot on my face. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now, I can't talk to you again until I next press record. But for you, my darlings, there will be no delay. You'll see me instantly. Hey, I'm back. Right. I used this. This is one of those wet to dry eyeliners. And I added a gold wing each side. And I actually used it to line my waterline. How long that will stay like that before my eyes start streaming in protest? I genuinely don't know. Um, but what I used was this artist's brush, which as you can see is super, super tiny. Um, and with the wet to dry ones, literally all you do is you put a couple of drops of water in there, you mix it up until it's the consistency you want, and then using a brush, just paint it on. Because I thought, do you know what? Why not? It looks pretty. Pretty. Right, I'm going to go in with this. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's flat topped and it's chunky. I love this for under the lower lash line. And I'm going to dip into Keeper, which is about a tone deeper than 
swarm that I used. I'm just going to gently buff that along the lower lash line, being very careful of course because I've now got foundation on so I don't really want fallout if I can help it. Normally I'll go in with a darker shade like a chocolate brown or something and then buff this out. But I wanted to keep it quite soft. So that was you know, the sort of thing that you could wear to work. Or you might want to not do the gold eyeliner and stuff for work but you know me I had to make it look pretty and I just couldn't resist I just had to keep playing right highlight wise I'm going to go in with my Jeffrey sarcophagus beautiful pale gold um, and it's one of the few golds that I can actually use on neutral to cool skin tone without it pulling too warm but you can also use it on warmer skin tones and it looks amazing um, it was originally one of the colours from his 24 karat eyeshadow palette which was aimed at deeper skin um, but this shade is more universal I would say it's because I'm the palest of the pale um, as you know as you can see and I can wear this and it just looks amazing and it also looks great on um, I've not seen it on super super deep skin tones but I have seen it on um, you know skin tones up to about a I don't know a MAC 30 or 35 it looks awesome right I'm going to pause you because I can feel this eye starting to well up again um, I'm going to lob some highlighter all over my face put some mascara on put a lippy on do something with the hair I'll be back with my finished look I am back right the mascara that you did my friend who sent me all of those lovely Charlotte Tilbury lippies has also sent me down a load of little sample sizes of mascaras and funnily enough this is the Charlotte Tilbury one full fat lashes five star mascara so giving that one a go today the lippy is a Jeffrey and it is glazed which is one of his bullet lipsticks that he did and obviously sarcophagus all over the face so I'm gonna pop the planet there again hello Saturn how the devil are you so pale gold the traits that the planet gives to Capricorn are discipline, restraint and a hard working ethic. But then if we compare it to the colours of Capricorn that I did the other day, they're almost diametrically opposite because the colours are far more seasonally appropriate because Capricorn is the star sign for people born between December the 22nd or 23rd and January the 19th. So that time of year can be very stormy, very dark, very dull um, and that is almost reflected in, not that I'm calling the colours dull but they are deeper, more saturated colours rather than being bright or pastel. So you've got the black going through greys down to white, you've got 
the purple starting from a very, very deep purple going through to about a mid-tone purple. You've then got the wine, the tan, the taupe and the beige. And then you've got the greens, you've got the emerald, the sage and the mint. So, although there are, if, if you took the lightest of all of those shades, you could make quite a, a light look. But when you look at that overall, the colour spectrum is deep and dark and almost gothic but appropriate for January which is when the majority I know it also falls into December but the majority of this sign is January but you then compare it to the planet which is pale gold and that to me is more spring like you know I, I see pale gold I think April I think daffodils coming out I think spring lambs, uh, spring sunshine, you know, it, it, it's, it's interesting to see just how different the colours and the planet are for the same star sign. So, I hope you found this a little bit interesting, a little bit fun something a bit different to just chucking some eyeshadow on and it gave me a chance to use that palette again there are two more parts to this series for different elements yet to come And then I've got to do the other 11 star signs. Wish me luck. Um, if you're one of my four, sorry, my phone bars and distracted me. If you're one of my four F babies, please double check you are still subscribed because it's, it's, it's Game of Thrones out there. People are being lopped off left, right and centre. Once you've double checked that you're subscribed and you've maybe hit that like button for me, possibly even shared it so that other people can enjoy the the weirdness really of my channel, let's be quite honest. Um, do let me know in the comment section of the two looks that I've done so far, which look do you prefer? Do you prefer the dark and stormy colours of the zodiac or are you more the beautiful pale gold of the planet of the zodiac? Are you a Capricorn? What colours are you drawn to? Are you drawn to any of the colours either either side? Let me know. I'd be super super interested to hear. And if you want to recreate your own version of this do please tag me I would be delighted to see it whether it's Instagram Twitter or if you've got a YouTube channel be sure to tag me and let me know right if you are new to this channel hi hello welcome I hope you enjoyed it here I'm not always this sassy pants sometimes I'm worse no, I'm, I'm usually much nicer, but mm, there's not a dragon on the Welsh flag for nothing. That's all I'm going to say, okay? Yeah. <coughs> but that being said, if you would like to join the 4F family, which is the nicest family on YouTube, feel free to hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, ring my bell. say yes I don't know how many times you currently have to say yes for YouTube to actually send you notifications but apparently you, you have to say it a lot then you might get one in four if you're lucky <laughs> right my darlings as ever all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time.
Bye for now.